This is not a true crime podcast, but this is a true crime story. The internet says it's true. Welcome to The Internet Says It's True, where every week we learn something that sounds like I made it up, but it's really true. Part of the WCBE podcast experience, my name is Michael Kent. Later on, we'll be joined by comedian and magician Eric Tate, so stay tuned for that. Some quick announcements. We'll be having the next Tizitor meetup on Zoom on April 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's open to all Tizitors, whether you're at the $1 level or the $10 level. Everyone is welcome to the meetup. That's patreon.com slash Michael Kent. That's for the meetups, the early episodes, the stickers, all the fun bonuses. So join there if you want all that or if you just want to support the show. Once again, patreon.com slash Michael Kent. This is a strange episode. I originally recorded it as a bonus episode, but the public has never heard this one. It's something that I literally stumbled upon while I was... It's something I literally stumbled upon while I was out doing some photography. As many of you know, one of my newest hobbies is wildlife photography, particularly bird photography. I was at a, a birding spot looking for a great horned owl. And this particular female owl hangs out in a tall pine tree in Green Lawn Cemetery here in Columbus. You wouldn't find the owl and the tree unless someone told you about it because it's a few hundred yards away from the nest, like three sections over. So there I am, crouching on the ground so I can get a perfect shot of this mama owl. She was sleeping, but every once in a while she'd open her eyes. So it was a game of what direction her head would be looking at that point and me contorting my body to get the right position where there wasn't a branch or pine needles in front of her face. Then I happened to look down and I noticed a gravestone with coins on it. It was the only one around with anything on it. I had walked through the Jewish section of the cemetery to get there, and it's common for those memorials to have stones or shells or, or toys placed on them, but not in this section. The only time I had seen coins placed on a grave was when I visited famous graves like I stumbled upon the grave of Robert Frost once when I was in Vermont, or when I visited the grave of Dred Scott in St. Louis. They were covered with coins from visitors, just people saying, I was here and I, I'm visiting this notable grave. So my brain is thinking this must be someone notable. I know that Green Lawn Cemetery has a lot of notable people in it, but I wouldn't recognize most of their names. This headstone read, James Howard, 1879 to 1930. So naturally, I took a photo and I looked it up. James Howard, Green Lawn Cemetery. What I found is shocking. Executed February 28th by electric chair at the Ohio Penitentiary. Here's the story. James Howard Snook graduated from the Ohio State University in 1908. I got my hands on a copy of the, the Macchio, or Macchio, which is like the Ohio State yearbook from from 1908, and Snook's senior quote was, his friends they are many, his foes are there any? He was a founding member of the Alpha Psi fraternity at Ohio State and was on the pistol team. In fact, he was so good with a pistol, he went on after getting his veterinary degree to be on the United States Olympic pistol team and won two gold medals in Antwerp in 1920. He worked as faculty of the veterinarian school at Cornell for a short time, but settled down back in Columbus, Ohio. He was a professor at Ohio State's veterinary school and an accomplished equine surgeon. He invented a very famous tool called the snook hook. It was basically a little steel tool that aided in spaying animals, and it's still in use today. As far as his personal life, he was a quiet man. Not many of his colleagues knew him all that well. He had a devoted wife, Helen, and a child, a young daughter. In the summer of 1926, Snook was 45, and he met a 22-year-old medical student, Theora Hicks. Snook was head of the department and a licensed veterinarian, and she was an attractive young woman who studied under him and worked in the veterinary building as a stenographer. The two held occasional conversations that developed into a friendship and eventually Snook gave Hicks a ride to her dorm room at Mack Hall. This led to more rides home and developed into longer rides into the Columbus countryside. They'd go for joy rides, have picnics, and he would take her shooting, which she took a liking to. He even bought her her own pistol. Her dorm room had previously been broken into, so having this Remington Derringer pistol helped ease her mind. 
they'd go to the New York Central shooting range on Fisher Road in Columbus to practice. Within three weeks, the two began a sexual relationship. She was more sexually advanced than Snook and often reminded him of this fact, telling him he should study up to be with her. And she meant that literally. She gave him sex books to study. Theora Hicks was an aggressive young girl who wanted what she wanted. In fact, she had another lover, Marion Myers, and she often told Snook that Myers was bigger and gave her more pleasure than he did. They started renting a small apartment on Hubbard Avenue to meet up for their affair. And while it was a complete secret to Snook's wife, it was apparently a well-known secret among the Ohio State Veterinary Department. As the affair went on, Snook's work started to suffer. He was smitten by the young student and started exhibiting erratic behavior just to be with her. She was a wild girl. She was demanding of his time and would demand he try things with her like drugs that she would force him to steal from the vet school pharmacy. She was a sadomasochist and dominated Snook, asking him to be aggressive with her. This all culminated on the night of July 13th, 1929, and we'll continue there in just a minute. If you love listening to this podcast every week and you want to show your support, that would mean a great deal to me. You can do that by becoming a Patreon member. We've got members at all levels, whether you want to pledge $1 a month or $10 a month. Just think about the value that you receive from this show. And if you like the histories and the stories that you learn about or the jokes that you hear, and if you think that they're worth it, consider signing up. For that, you get every episode ad-free and a week early, access to bonuses like the unedited videos of the guest appearances, and 20% off all merchandise. You can sign up today at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. That's patreon.com slash Michael Kent. There was a time that humans used 100% organic products as healing balms and moisturizers for their skin. Well, I've partnered with an awesome company that wants to get back to those times. Fatco sells organic and responsibly made tallow-based skincare products. For centuries, humans used tallow in skin moisturizers and healing balms, but Unfortunately, the topical application of these fats seemed to stop around the same time that animal fats stopped being considered part of a healthy diet. A lot of modern skincare products do more harm than good by stripping your skin of its natural oils. Let's change that. You can try them out now at fatco.com and get 15% off your order by using my promo code INTERNET. Go to the internet says it's true.com slash deals for the link. We're living through the most dynamic time in human history, and what we do as leaders matter. We are the ones that create the leverage to shift directions of our companies, our nonprofits, and our communities. As a leader or an emerging leader, please join me for a dynamic conversation with top thought leaders, academics, and executives to learn more about how to elevate your leadership. I'm Maureen Metcalf. Join us at the WCBE podcast experience at wcbe.org. RG. Let's get back to the story now. So we're in the summer of 1929. James Howard Snook and Theora Hicks had been carrying on a secret affair for three years. It was hot and heavy, mostly a physical relationship. She hadn't been seen for a few days. Her roommates reported Theora missing. And on July 16, 1929, two teenage boys were walking around the New York Central Rifle Range in Fisher Road and found a body. It had been badly beaten and slashed. Her skull had been crushed. Her throat was cut. Well, it turned out the body was Theora Hicks. At first, the police looked to Marion Myers, who had been known to be Hicks's boyfriend. Well, he was quickly released because he hadn't dated Hicks in over a year. Eventually, the word got around that they should talk to Snook. Of course, he denied everything. Now, this was before Miranda writes, and after 19 hours of questioning... Eventually, the city prosecutor smacked Snook in the face and he started confessing to everything, every detail. Everything we know about this case, we know because of the court proceedings. Now, this court case was one of the most notable of the time because of the insane amount of graphic detail that was reported, both about the murder and about their sexual relationship. Here's what reportedly happened. On the night of July 13th, the two lovers were looking for a place to sneak away to. Snook suggested they go to the Scioto Country Club. Theora Hicks didn't want to go there because people might hear them having sex. She said, I would like to go someplace further where I can scream. 
He thought of the rifle range where he had taken her to go shooting. It was secluded and out of the way, so the two of them tried to have sex in Snook's small car at the rifle range, but he was unable to perform. Snook's words were, quote, it was unsatisfactory for both of us, end quote. Snook was running out of time and needed to return home to his family that night. He had plans to take his, his family to his mother's house for the weekend. According to Snook, Hicks heard this and spun into a jealous rage. Now, it's important to remember, this is Snook's testimony about what happened, and it's just disgustingly full of him blaming his victim. Sadly, we don't have Hicks's version of the story because she's dead. So Snook said Hicks yelled at him and said, Damn your mother, I don't care about your mother. Damn Mrs. Snook. I'm going to kill her and get her out of the way. So she's talking about Helen here, James's wife. He then said she threatened not only his wife, but his young daughter, and to kill him too. Here's his testimony of what Hicks said. So this is him talking. She said, you have got to help me out. She grabbed open my trousers and went down on me, and she didn't do it very nicely, and she bit me and got hold of my privates and pulled so hard I simply could not stand it. I got hold of something out of this kit in the back seat of the car and hit her with it. I finally got her loose, very nearly twisted her arm off, and she sat up there a little bit and said, Damn you, I will kill you too. She grabbed her purse and slid out of the car. I was in so much pain, and when I tried to straighten up, all at once it flashed through my mind that she was getting out, and I knew if she got out, she would shoot me. I hit her once, I hit her again, and she slid right out on the ground, and I followed her out. I got up behind her and hit her head once more with the hammer, and she went down and hit her head against the running board of the car, and that is all I can remember of hitting her. That's the end of the quote. So that's all from the court transcript. But he then claimed he didn't remember killing her or cutting her. The cut across her carotid artery was so precise that only someone knowledgeable in anatomy could have done it. Besides that, they had actually found quite a bit of evidence on Snook. At his home, they found a ball-peen hammer and a pocket knife, both splattered with Hicks's blood. He had washed his car out the day after the murder, but they still found blood and bloody clothes in the car. His wife couldn't account for his whereabouts on the evening of July 13th. The jury deliberated for, oh, about 28 minutes and found him guilty. On August 14th of 1929, he was sentenced to death and was executed by the electric chair on February 28, 1930. He was buried in sort of a secret way. His wife and daughter were obviously ashamed of what he had done, so much so they dropped his last name. And if you would visit Green Lawn Cemetery and ask for the information of James Snook, the cemetery office would find the following on a small burial record card. Snook, James H., number 68204, cause of death, legal electrocution. Then, in a handwritten note scribbled on top of the card, do not give out location. And that's why if you visit Greenlawn Cemetery and go to section 87 and happen to find plot number 243, you'll find a stone that is purposely vague, a stone that was carved without a last name to prevent people from finding it. It simply says, James Howard, 1879 to 1930. Now it's time for the part of the podcast where I call a friend, see if they already know what we just learned. I wanted to grab someone from Columbus, so today we're calling my friend Eric Tate. He's a fellow comedy magician, and many of you already know him if you've listened to this show before. Eric, thank you so much for coming on the bonus episode. We just wrapped up on doing the the episode about Flash and China and the Chinese train. This one's a little bit more interesting. For this first question, we are playing for three Twitter followers. So okay. if you get it wrong, you have to get me three Twitter followers any way that you know how. And if you get it right, right. I have to get you three. And okay. you and, and you have to actually, you know, pay attention because if like if you get it right and I go on there and I say you get, get, everyone needs to follow Eric Tate, mm -hmm. start counting because they're okay. going to roll in. I don't I don't know how long it would take to do that. I might have to say it several times. James uh, 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I will tell you, um, as a matter of course, uh, the way I obtained my Oculus Rift was I, 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 I poop posted on the internet that I was an influencer and that someone needs to buy me a Rift and then let's wait. And then a guy was like, if you, a guy said, if you can get 150 followers for my business, I will give you, uh, I will buy you an Oculus Rift. And so then I went on Fiverr and I bought him a thousand followers for his business page for five dollars. And then amazing. he sent me, and then he sent me an Oculus Rift. Oh my god! For, I I knew that great. story all except for the Fiverr part, yes. uh, <laughs> which is freaking diabolical. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic, man. He he now knows what happened and thinks it's hilarious. And okay, tells good. People that he got scammed. Okay, um, good. So that's so that's I was that's the that was the ethical part of that that I was interested in about is is you know those are people who will not interact with his company on Facebook. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's that's really funny. So it, it's a good deal on his end though. Like that, I would pay a hundred. You know, I would pay what? How much? That's like a four or five hundred dollar item though, isn't it? Or is it more uh, than that? It's like it was like three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. For 150 yeah. followers, two dollars yeah. a follow. Interesting, interesting. Yes. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> well, this is a a story about Columbus, Ohio, mm-hmm. uh, and here is the first question: James H. Snook was an Olympic gold medalist in pistol shooting, who is better oh. known for which one of these other things? A. Inventing Cheerios. B. Cross breeding cattle or C murder. I think it's cross breeding cattle. The answer is murder, which is a nut, which is a definite like, like a, that's a way to murder someone. <laughs> cross breeding cattle. Now, the, the interesting thing about James Snook was that he was a, a veterinarian, he was actually a professor of veter- veterinary sciences at Ohio State, mm-hmm. but when he was a professor. He fell in love with a young student, and when she threatened to tell his family, he murdered her. He is known for being famously buried in Greenlawn Cemetery with an unmarked grave, uh, and by unmarked, they just left his last name off of it. I stumbled Uh upon this because I was photographing a, a great horned owl a couple months ago, and I looked down, and there was a grave with a bunch of coins on it. And so mm-hmm. I Googled the grave and that was it. So these are, did, pe- you, did you take the coins? I, I didn't. I should have. Cause you know, I this mean, guy, he's a, mur- he's, murderer. A, yeah. he's a murderer, right? No, I didn't take the coins. I should have though. I would have been literally 37 cents richer. Question two. Oh, you got that wrong. So, uh, I ha- you have to get me three Twitter followers. And so okay. I'll know right now if I end up with a thousand where they came from. Yes, <laughs> but but I don't know that this this quiz is worth five dollars of, of your money. Question no, two for question two. If you get it right, I will have to make the sound of any animal you choose. If you get it wrong, you have to make the sound of any animal I choose. OK, Snook competed and won gold in the 1920 Olympic Games, which were held in Antwerp, Belgium. The previous Olympic Games had been canceled. Why were they canceled? Uh, what year was this? 1920 Olympic Games. Oh, uh, was it was the Spanish flu. The previous Olympic Games before the 19, the 1920 were held. So he won gold in the 1920 Games. The previous Olympic Games before that had been canceled. Okay, so what's the multiple choice? Uh, no multiple choice for this one. Oh, and it's not Spanish flu. And it's not Spanish flu. Um, another. Oh, it's 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 the First World War. It is the First World War. Yes. Uh, and for 94 bonus points, in which country were they supposed to be held? Uh, somewhere in Europe, I think. That is correct. Uh, specifically, they were supposed to be held in Germany. Okay. So, yes. the yeah, the original uh, 1916 Olympic Games would have been in... Well, I'm not sure it would have been 1916, because I think they... They waited. It, I'd have to look wouldn't, that up. Wouldn't have that been Prussia at the time? Uh, yeah, it would have been Prussia, I believe. But I think the city was going to be Berlin, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. All right. So you got it uh, right. So I'll make the sound of any animal you choose. Uh, I would like 
you to make the sound of a Panamanian golden toad. Okay. Uh, hold on, I gotta get. <clears throat> That is that is incorrect. They they make no noise. They simply wave their arms because they <laughs> they live near like really loud babbling brooks, and so they communicate through a, a sort of like waving at people. That is that is incredible. That could be an entire episode of this show. I think that is there's a really great. There's a really great David Attenborough series on um, uh, where there's an episode on amphibians and he devotes a, a significant period portion of time to Panamanian golden toads, which are incredibly poisonous. And we have some here at the Columbus zoo Do we um, really? and they're one of, yeah, they're one of my favorite uh, frogs to, to look at. They're beautiful, but they, uh, they just, they communicate through waving. They wave their tiny little hands. I wonder if the ones in captivity wave to each other. I wonder if yeah. that's a thing. I've seen them wave at each other. Wow. Okay. That's a bucket list thing now for the next I, sh- I shouldn't say bucket list. It's a, that's a list item for the next trip to the zoo, we'll say. I mean, if you get to handle them, it's a bucket list item. Just because <laughs> it's crazy tech. Um, yeah. my, it's the last item on my bucket list. Yeah. yeah. If you get this question three right, I'll send you. It's another chance to get a tell me what to Google sticker in the mail. I've got 200 of them left. So they are collector's items. Another chance to to get rid of my shit. Ohio was the second state in the country to use the electric chair for execution. At the time, it was seen as a more humane way of executing people than hanging. 315 electrocutions took place at the Ohio State Penitentiary until they stopped using the electric chair in what year? Now, this will be multiple choice. So this is the year that they stopped using the electric chair in Ohio. Was it A, 1981, B, 1963 or C 1942 it was whatever year the jail it was inside burned to the ground really I think so was it 1942 I'm sorry the answer is 1963 Uh, but so you you know of a story where the the jail at Ohio State Penitentiary burned to the ground if if it's if it's the one I'm thinking of, um, I went on like a a walking tour where they like they took you to like the most haunted places in Columbus, and then yeah. you like uh, it turns out that like most of those haunted places are breweries now because it's the Midwest, <laughs> and yeah. uh, they 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 were like, uh, and here where you're having a beer, like a thousand inmates died when the jail burned to the ground. It was it was very oh. it was a it was a really unsettling walking tour. Seriously. Um, uh, the rest of it was really interesting, except for the point where they were just like, and where you're standing is where the jail burned to the ground. And so I thought that's what it was. Interesting. Maybe 1963 uh, was the final, the final electric chair year in Ohio. It is interesting to note that the state of Georgia's official method of capital punishment was the electric chair all the way up until 2001. Wow. That is not that long ago. So they just 20 years ago. They got rid of the electric chair in Georgia. You know, when I moved to Columbus in 1997, the penitentiary was still standing. At least one big section of the penitentiary was still standing. So you can you know, drive I may, by it. I may be thinking of like a different jail that was that may have not been like the Ohio State Penitentiary. It's probably a different prison that I'm thinking of. But there was a prison in Columbus that burned down. Interesting. I'll have to look that up. So for question, oh, so so that one is. Uh, I don't get a, I don't get another one of your stickers, Michael. You're, damn it! You're, you're you're stuck with your outdated merch. Damn it! All right, so let's move on to question four. For question I four, hope it, I hope uh, it becomes tradition on this show for no one to get that prize right. That would so be that pretty you funny. Have to still have two hundred stickers. Uh, yeah, I've got a giant stack of these stickers, and well, even the people that have got them right, I don't think I've mailed any of them because, like, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I really do need to send some out. So yeah, I, I literally I probably got these stickers the week that I changed the name of the podcast too. So I nice. no one got the opportunity to uh to get them. Except for when you join the Patreon, you do get a sticker. So those I have mailed out. So, okay, so question four. There are no stakes for question four. We're not playing Perfect. for anything for this one. But it is uh a very important the, question. The love of the game. Yeah, this one's just for funs. How many people are buried in Greenlawn Cemetery. A, 54,000. B, 154,000. C, 
354,000. Uh, is it C? Is it just like a shocking amount of dead bodies? It is B, 154,000. Here's the interesting part. It was where people in Columbus came to hang out and have picnics before Columbus's first city park. Very fa- And that was, you know, of the time. It opened in 1848, yeah. and people just used to have fun in cemeteries. That's what people did. Uh, and yeah. there is burial space for the cemetery to add interments for the next 100 to 150 years, which shocks the hell That's out of great. me. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's that much open space there, but yeah, I think it's because they stack the corpses like cordwood at Greenlawn Cemetery. They're just like, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 like if the, if you see cars parked on the street in Greenlawn Cemetery, the trunks mm-hmm. all full. Yeah, all the trunks. Every are full. one of them. You yeah. know that is the case in Savannah, Georgia. Um, they they do have stacked burial spaces because so many mm-hmm. people have died in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, yeah, I I went on one of those ghost walk adventures i do those everywhere when i like going on those in old cities and i did the one in savannah and they talk about all of the different things yellow fever spanish flu multiple wars they there was a time during in the in the height of yellow fever in savannah they did not have space to bury people and they were stacking them in buildings um they they built a tunnel there was a tunnel that went under one of the hospitals and connected it to another building the tunnel was literally full of dead bodies Oh, that's wild. Yeah, crazy. And they I think they just blocked it off and be, that just became a, a burial vault at, at one point. I may be making Oof. that part up. I don't know. All right, all right, question five. Question five. This one's for all the marbles. If you get this wrong, I'm banning you from the show, never to be asked on again. What is currently inspiring you? Uh, I'm, I'm currently, I'm being very inspired by a lot of Twitch streamers. Um, there's some really, really clever stuff that's happening on Twitch that I, I think, um, it's like a weird combination of, uh, entertainment, uh, like comedy, like really, really alt comedy, uh, programming and, uh, uh, just like, uh, like, like passion for doing something strange. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really like code Miko. Um, she's a VTuber, uh, which is like a virtual, uh, so like she, she streams on Twitch, but you're never watching her. You're watching like a care, like a, a virtual character that she has created and she wears a motion capture suit and then a, a helmet that also captures her face. And it translates all of that motion, all of the facial expressions to a very, um, a very detailed virtual character that she's mapped and she has given her chat the the ability to change things inside of her stream just through channel points and bits and donations and things like that and uh it is and she refuses to put slow mode on her chat so it's just like and like she gets like 10 to twenty thousand people watching her at once and so it's just like complete chaos wow um the chat is also like constantly running um, and scrolling on her uh, on her character's shirt. So you can like sort of, if you just watch her and watch her character's shirt, you can sort of see what like 10,000 people are all thinking like collectively and how the chat like moves as a herd. Wow. Um, and so it's this like, it really is this like amazing like technical triumph what she's doing but also she's just a complete troll so she'll like the chat will like make her angry and then suddenly she is like dressed as like a sexy nun in a latex habit with a giant flaming sword and a corpse next to her and you're just and like and uh it's all happening in real time it's all just like it, it's it's very strange and it's hard to put your finger on like exactly what's going on. Um, but it's really interesting. And like, she's just one of my favorites, but there's like, there's so many people who are doing so many interesting things that are this like really bonkers. Um, j- just like super creative stuff that you wouldn't, that is just like that only exists in this space. And it's impossible to take this and translate it into like a live 
show or, or, or even something that like, cause it doesn't exist without the interactivity. Um, and I think that's, what's so interesting. Um, like even in my own Twitch streams, like giving my chat the ability to turn cameras on and off and like make things appear on stream. And then also like change the colors in the, my office of just the lights that the, the people are doing. Like some of it is like, here's a reward for doing this thing and like positive reinforcement, but others like watching my chat, like sort of like figure out how to just suddenly plunge me into darkness in a way that I had not planned was really interesting. Um, and I think that's, what's really inspiring me. Like I, I love live performance and I love doing, and, and I love like, you know, creating interesting magic tricks and like, you know, and doing things, but just watching some of the stuff that's happening on Twitch, that is, it's more, it's, it's not just people playing video games. It's, it's so far beyond that. and so interesting that, uh, I, I can just get lost in it for days where I'm like, oh man, this is really cool. And it, and it inspires me to want to do my own stuff like that. Yeah. You, you have become, to do a callback to the previous uh, episode podcast we did, you have become the subservient chicken in a way. Uh, I am so new to Twitch that I, you've gotten me now wanting to learn more. So I, I, I spend a lot of time watching a lot of IRL content, and mm -hmm. um, I also spend a lot of time in the politics section listening to different various shows, and, and that's sort yeah. of interesting. Uh, but thanks again, man, for taking you know some time out of your Sunday morning, and sure. uh, I hope that that you have a, a continue to have a nice, enjoyable, relaxing, do nothing Sunday. We will. Thanks yeah, very man. much. Yeah, have a great one. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks to Eric Tate for being my guest, and thanks to all of you for being a Patreon supporter and for continuing to listen to this show i hope to do some more bonus episodes like this in the future until then i hope that you're enjoying the regular podcast tell your friends about it and i will see you soon